When I was thinking about what people remember fondly about the game, at the time, I think it was enjoying the thrills and getting the timing right when they played it. I think enjoying the game world and experiencing the fantasy world of Disney were a big part of it, too. What they'll see in the 2013 version will be nothing like the old game in some sense, but I'm hoping that players can relive the same emotions when they play it. It's taking something that was very iconic in the 16-bit era and thinking, well, how can we take something that was really special, really worked well, was one of the most iconic games of its time, and actually try and explore that in new ways with the technology. And we have to be very mindful of um, what made the original so successful and why people loved it, and, uh, and, and try and bring that forward without it being just, you know, literally a one-for-one -one remake. There were a lot of unique games at the time in terms of graphics or the general atmosphere of the game. Even among those, this game made an impression that still lasts, and now it's being remade. The fact that we're bringing back something nostalgic that people remember fondly as a game they enjoyed years ago, to me, is the epitome of Disney. The original game, it just had a lot going for it. I think even the name Castle of Illusion was something cool. You know, straight away, Castle of Illusion says, oh, what's that? Oh, what's inside that castle? And then you've got Mickey Mouse, biggest character in the world. So straight away, you're like, oh, that's awesome. We're going to play Mickey Mouse through this Castle of Illusion. And it innovated on all levels, camera, control, platforming. And I think the core gamers absolutely loved it. So that, in essence, it's a very simple platformer, but it grabs the magic of Disney, the magic of Mickey. It was my first time making a game, so I came up with ideas I thought might be interesting and things I thought would help flesh out the fantasy world without being hesitant about how difficult or unconventional they might be. In that sense, I think that helped us make a unique game. First, the animation was unique in that it used a remarkable number of frames in the animation for its time. We tried to use as many techniques from film animation as we could. Also, we put a lot of energy into the backgrounds for its time, packing in as much as we could given the memory constraints. I think both efforts paid off in terms of the game's graphic quality. A Disney animation is always moving from beginning to end. At the time we were making our game, if you didn't do something on the controller, nothing would move at all. So we thought, if we want to bring Disney animations to life, we need things moving on the screen all the time. These days you see it in almost all games, but at the time, we were one of the first games where your character would move even when you're not doing anything. The amount of memory or VRAM that we had to work with at the time was really tiny. You need memory to make good, rich animations. But the way VRAM had been used prior to that point wasn't very well suited for animations like that. So we worked with the programmers to rebuild the system from the ground up to let us focus more on the animations. Once we got the animations where we wanted them, we adjusted the character's movements pixel by pixel for a better feel when the player controls him. When we were told to make a Mickey Mouse game, I didn't want to make a game that was just about Mickey being cute. Our focus was on how we could include the Disney world view from their classic movies. So rather than Mickey Mouse alone, we drew inspiration from the various classic movies that Disney's produced. Games at the time were 8-bit or 16-bit, so there wasn't really a lot of room to work with. Most people in the industry weren't putting a lot of work into graphics or creating animations that conveyed a lot of character emotion. When we watched Disney movies and Mickey, it seemed like such a waste to take the fluid animations and beautiful backgrounds and turn them into pixelated graphics. So I think we put a lot more work into the graphics than any other title at the time. When we were making the Dragon Balls for the candy stage, we couldn't figure out what to use for the dragon's body. Someone from Sega's US office sent us some licorice as a suggestion. Most of the team hated it, but I couldn't stop eating it. I was holding one of the hollow ones in my mouth and breathing through it like a straw as I worked and ended up filling the whole room with the smell. When we were working on this game, I was focused on animations and recreating the world of Disney. And now, modern technology can deliver Disney visuals directly and cinematically rather than via blocky pixel graphics. The new game will be able to recreate the world of Disney movies on a level that we weren't able to reach. The world the game creates, and the game itself as well, will be that much closer to the world you see in the movies. People will be able to enjoy that as they play. The original game had this, and it's there in the remake as well. The essence of Disney, a positive world of dreams, peace, and imagination. It's the epitome of Disney, and I hope everyone enjoys that in the new game, too.
we're very fortunate to be still working with the original producer of the game. Um, I don't think many other studios have ever had that opportunity. Sega actually approached us about this a number of times, so I've seen prototypes and ideas from other developers as well. But with SSA's prototype, it took me back to when I was working on the original game. It reminded me of things I was feeling at the time, or what was going through my head as I was working on it. And that's a wonderful thing, and it made me really want to work with them. But the prototype we delivered was actually to be presented to the producer of the original game. There is nothing like that as a goal to motivate a team and then to fly a lot of that team over to Japan and present live. Um, I myself was quite nervous. I've heard that the producer was very tough, very talented. She did the original game. We were there in the meeting, everything was quiet. She walks in, everybody's very nervous. It went phenomenally well. She was happy, she was laughing, she enjoyed what we did to Mickey. For us to change the mechanics, we have to be very cautious. We can't steer too far away from the feel of Mickey, and we can't go too, too retro, because there were technology constraints in those days on what you could do with Mickey. So we've analyzed the feel of Mickey, the jump heights, the inertia, the, the turn the, 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 on the edge of a cliff, and we've been able to just knock it out of the park, all the animations. And now we're challenged by the feel of Mickey. So we feel we can move from the retro to retro plus. We can do more of what I think the gamers in those days would have loved because of our technology. It's more lifelike, it's more, it's more fun. The lighting effects are taken into the account, the candlelight in the background. So all of a sudden the personality, the core pillar of the game, Mickey, is brought to life. And that's something that we really want to do with Castle of Illusion, is try and modernize Mickey, but put him in the context of what we had before in the original game. Um, and our challenge then is to try and improve the animations, the look and feel of Mickey, um, the characters around Mickey, the, um, the environments that he's in, and, and even the music score is, is a massive part of that whole Disney package. Primarily, we're able to do a lot more with the sound effects, the mixing, um, the environmental effects. I mean, these are all things that we come to expect without realizing it. If a fan of the original picks up and plays the new Castle of Illusion, I think they're going to be really surprised. I think they're going to feel like this is Castle of Illusion, and I think we've, we've played a few little tricks on them along the way. And I think if, if they're looking out for those, those things that they remember, they're going to see them and a few extra as well. That's the thing I'm most nervous about. When people who've played the game before get their hands on the new game, what will they think? I can't wait to find out. It's expressed in a completely different way, but the essence is the same. So I hope the enjoyment they experience from it is the same. Cast of Illusion, one of the best-selling Genesis games of all time. It's the perfect game for us to develop with Disney. It's such a classic. People love Castle of Illusion. They've got such fond memories of it really passionate about the game and the, the experience that I had when I was young and to try and offer that to the new generation and, and, and people that have experienced it before is a, yeah, it's just a, a great feeling really. There is definitely something about Disney which I don't think any other brand has quite captured. It's Disney. It's a, it's a descriptive word in itself. Disney's re renowned for its, uh, for its characters, for its visuals, for its animations, for its music. Everything that Disney touches has an air of magic to it, and they, they try to, uh, as a company, try and encompass that in all their products. It doesn't matter if you're a core gamer, family gamer, whatever the gamer, um, you need to capture that sense of enjoyment, passion. <laughs> I was a child, I bought it. It was one of my favorite games. I played it to death. I grew up with my Mega Drive. I've played all the uh, classic uh, Disney games. And Castle of Illusion stands up as one of my all-time favorites. 20 years later, to be given the opportunity to work on that IP, to reimagine it and bring it forward with today's technology was just, you know, an, an amazing opportunity. For us, it was important to just respect the original. In, in as many ways as we could. What we wanted to do was just improve upon areas that we can improve upon because we've got new technology, we've got new systems, a new tool set. We have to be very careful not to go and run with the game in a completely different direction. We have to embrace what was good about it to begin with. You'll see all the same uh, familiar characters, you'll see the familiar worlds. All the themes that you remember in the original game are there. 
and we've kept to the original in such a way that Disney can, can recognize it immediately. They recognize the, the tree stump and they smile. They go, that's, that's exactly what we're looking for. I think I employ 35 people that love Mickey. So um, making them happy, I think, is a good indication that the audience is going to be happy. He's a stoical guy. He never really gets too bothered by things. He's, he's always willing to give it a go. It's very brave, but at the same time, very kind. He's quite charming in the way he approaches things, and we really wanted to capture a lot of that charm from Mickey that you see in the old kind of Mickey cartoons. Obviously, there's, there's a little bit of pressure there for uh, making him awesome because it's Mickey Mouse, and he's, you know, the biggest character in the world. We are not going to reinvent Mickey. We have to respect the style of Mickey, the look and feel, the characteristics, the animation cycles, the walk cycles. And not only that, but from an artistic point of view, we have great concept artists that have been able to really capture the look of Mickey and how, what he meant in Castle of Illusion in the Mega Drive era and how do we bring a flavor of that into the new modernized version, but without changing him so much that he distinctly looks like a different Mickey Mouse. <laughs> The world itself is like, it's enchanting, uh, it's rich and full. I think one thing that I always sort of think about Disney is that at a word or a spell, something's gonna come to life. You know, just off to the corner, you know, something could just pop to life and, and come at you. The library is the first level where I've got a Disney moment. I'm jumping on the books. There's a puff of smoke, the dust. The, the books fall beneath my feet and there's an enemy, and it's an A. It's a letter A, and it's attacking me. I don't know many games where a letter can actually scare a grown man. You just never know what's gonna happen around the next corner. I think that's, that's something that really keeps you engaged as a player. We didn't really diverge too much in the story. It's a very true Disney story. Uh, Miserable has come upon uh, Mickey and Minnie out sort of having fun in the forest, like dancing away, and she's taken by Minnie's beauty and wants it for herself, so she steals her away, and Mickey, being the, the, the hero, little boyfriend, <laughs> he just, you know, runs off and, and uh, chases after her, and he gets dragged into this castle uh, of illusion where, where Miserable has set up all these traps. Uh, for those that know the original, to, to see what we've done with it, and for those that don't, for, for the new kids and anyone else that uh, is new to the, new to the IP, um, and enough there to give them a little bit more of a story uh, from start to finish. I like that. That's, that's pretty cool. I think for almost 100 years now, Disney have been um, pioneering so many things with animation and audio, and the key for me was synchronizing them together. Audio and music is a, is a massive part of, the, of Disney itself, and that's something we take very seriously. So for us, it was important that we, again, try to pursue certain sounds that made sense to the, to the environment that uh, Mickey was in. When making a new modern Castle of Illusion, we're able to use the old Castle of Illusion as liberal as we need to. Um, and it's actually been quite nice to take the entire original 16-bit um, track and use them in the modern version as well. But sometimes by retaining that low fidelity, that's part of its charm of its style. So I do think it's important to retain that. Although we have cleaned it up a little bit, it still retains that original character. Hey, I need that to save Minnie. Come back. We have had the opportunity to allow Mickey to speak. You know, this was something that we felt passionately about, having him interact in the story. From a sound perspective, we've been able to help it into the 21st century by, I think, primarily, we're able to do a lot more with the sound effects, the mixing, um, the environmental effects. I mean, these are all things that we've come to expect without realizing it. So we're able to go further with interactive music, and we can have more dynamic things going along with the sound effects and the voice as well. <laughs> Castle of Illusion, you know, is built from the ground up, you know, from every point from animations to music to environment to gameplay, everything is built from the ground up. And that's a really nice, exciting way of taking something that everyone holds dear to them and kind of improving that for the new generation. I, I think they'll love it. I mean, I, we, we love it.